Hello, and welcome to the FTCA Deeming Application Webinar for the calendar year 2022 coverage period. I hope everyone is looking forward to another year of successful application submissions. We appreciate the time you are taking to listen to this session. Please know that it is not lost on us all the amazing work you do for the people you serve in each of your communities, especially during this difficult time as we all work hard to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. My name is Arlene Wongus and I am a nurse consultant in BIPIX FTCA division. Let's get into some demon application fun. In today's session, we will go over the FTCA Damien application requirements. This will include a detailed look into the risk management section requirements. During this review, we will make sure to provide some valuable technical assistance and resources. Now it's time for some technical assistance portion of our presentation. What is a risk management program? The ultimate goal of a risk management program is what measures should be in place to provide patient safety. In addition to identifying potential events that may affect the health center, the program is designed to protect and minimize patients, employees, and services from risk, ensure safe operations, a safe environment of care, and much more. So if you are wondering where to start, this is a good time to mention ECRI resources. ECRI.org offers technical assistance that is free to all health center staff. They have many helpful products, including a sample um, operation schedule, risk management tools that includes a plan, operational checklist, risk management basics, sample of job descriptions, meeting minutes and agendas, sample occurrence report forms, and legal basics. There are also many staff training products, such as the Ambulatory Care Risk Management Certificate course, an e-learn catalog of free risk management courses for CME and CNE credit, and recommendations for risk management training for all staff. The risk management program has many operational benefits, not just to the health center, but to the communities being served. These benefits can be achieved through many ways, such as through organizational commitment. Any organization that knows its strengths and corrects its weaknesses will be better prepared to handle the challenges of providing quality care through compliance. One of the most important benefits of an effective risk management program is helping to ensure compliance with several key aspects of accreditation. By gathering data, by providing a framework to gather data that can be used to improve patient outcomes, an effective risk management program can provide ample opportunities for meaningful quality improvement studies, which positively impact patient outcomes, and captures another aspect of accreditation and Medicare requirements. By identifying system and provider weaknesses before an adverse event occurs. An effective risk management program is an organization's first line of defense in identifying a weakness or system failure before it occurs and by mitigating or reducing any loss after it occurs. By reduction of potential loss after an event has occurred. If you follow the principles of risk management, you can mitigate collateral losses following an adverse event. And finally, by establishing a culture of safety. You can reduce number, type, and severity of adverse events. Preventing every possible adverse event may not be possible, but with the right program, the number of events can be reduced if the organization is fully engaged, 
recognizes the protection afforded to it through risk management and actively encourages its employees participation in risk management. Full participation and commitment is a must. In determining important training topics, it's important to recognize the key components of a risk management plan. Risk management spans the entire operation and most functional areas of the health center. You see listed here a wide variety of sources to view, review or tap into when making the decision of what components should be in your plan. In developing your plan, note the specific areas with a high impact on risk and safety. The focus is on developing a culture of safety and most of all, staying committed to it by constantly analyzing and instituting performance improvement strategies. Acknowledging and responding to lessons learned is key to a constant program progress. The key components that we want to bring to your attention and listed here all point to either specific examples or trending data that help your health center identify areas of risk. For instance, let's consider incident report summaries, medical record reviews, patient satisfaction surveys, and patient complaints. They all point to specific instances where a health center can target efforts. Remember, these are all pieces of data that can yield trends which can further help inform overall health center operations or provide opportunities to highlight areas that could benefit from additional budget funds or oversight. Let's discuss why it is so critical to have a training program. Whether the staff has been there for decades or just a few weeks, training is applicable to all individuals involved with patient care. The center's patient safety and risk management program goals and objectives should include the following. Ways to continuously improve patient safety and minimize or prevent the occurrence of errors, events, and system breakdowns, which lead to harming of patients, staff, volunteers, and visitors. A commitment to patient safety is very critical when discussing proactive risk management. Remember, proactive risk management and patient safety activities should include ways to minimize adverse effects of errors, events, and system breakdowns when they do occur, ways to minimize losses to the organization overall, being proactive in identifying, analyzing, preventing, and controlling potential risk, Facilitation of compliance with regulatory, legal, and accrediting agency requirements, such as the Joint Commission, and protection of human rights and intangible resources, such as your organization's reputation. When setting up risk management training, health centers need to consider the context within which they operate. Using health center specific data to help you decide the topics and process to include. Examples include health center experiences, incident reports, complaint reports, claims history, records, performance indicators, and a proactive look at near misses. Establish methods and processes for tracking and documenting staff completion of risk management training programs. A chart will be shared later during this program. Documented participation and compliance and risk management training should be included as part of the credentialing and privileging process. There are a variety of organizations that offer general and specific specialty-based risk management information, such as Team Steps Training Program, the World Health Organization's Patient Safety Curriculum Guide, and the American Medical Association's Continuing Medical Education Activities. 
Various education and training tools are also available on the ECRI Clinical Risk Management Program website. ECRI is always a good place to get valuable resources. Some elements to cover within the Health Centers Program include outlining the process for selection of training requirements, use data from QIQA committee, risk management data, claims data, and specific event occurrences. Outline a process for tracking training attendance and completion. Show how training is connected back to performance reviews and credentialing and privileging. Include processes for dealing with non-compliance with training requirements. Include appropriate resources of training. The health center can determine which sources to utilize for its management training program. For instance, online, inpatient, in-person, ECRI, HRSA, or other sources. The question is often asked, is risk management applicable to all my, sta my, all my staff? The answer is yes and yes. All staff are key to successful implementation of the risk management program and should be knowledgeable of and participate in risk management activities. It goes back to creating a culture of safety. An informed United Health Center staff will equal a safe place for patients to get health care. All staff have responsibilities to assist with the implementation of recommended improvements and to identify risk events and opportunities for improvement. This is all coordinated through the risk manager. Everyone should be trained on risk management functions and responsibilities. Take a moment to consider your health center and its operations. Will your staff be able to describe and demonstrate risk management policies or procedures if asked? No need to answer for this webinar's purpose, but something to consider as you evaluate your risk management operations. Start with writing the plan. In writing the plan, you need to decide the topics to be covered and which topics are required for different staff members. Develop and implement a plan for annual continuing education and risk management training for all staff. Ensure that the staff takes into account staff roles and responsibilities in the plan. Set training goals and document or track staff completion. Health centers should determine the number of required training programs on an individual basis and based on size and needs of the center. Ensure that the board supports and approves the plan or delegates the approval authority to authorize leadership. For additional assistance on this topic, click on the link provided to be routed to some great resources provided by ECRI. For the documentation of the training plan, details should include staff name, title, type of training, process for tra tracking training attendance and completion, the process for dealing with non-compliance and with training requirement. Here you see just one example of training tracking and it contains the staff name, the staff tracking ID, the name or title of the training, the date it was completed, CEUs earned as applicable, and the due date for the next training on that topic. You can use a tool such as this one from ECRI to track compliance with risk management training. Ensure that time has been set aside for staff to complete training programs. Be creative in making time and space for them to complete all modules. Nothing is done well when rushed. When tracking staff compliance, require employees to submit the list of completed trainings 
as part of the credentialing and privileging process. Keep training records in the employee's credentialing file. Review compliance on an annual basis. Make necessary updates to meet changing needs and trends and report results to the board's board of directors annually. Tracking procedures are another vital area of your risk management program. Documentation and implementation of tracking procedures are aspects of risk management that de demonstrate how the health center mitigates risk and follows through on patient care with referral tracking, hospitalization tracking, and diagnostic tracking. Staff should not only know what the procedures are, but also be able to describe and demonstrate the process. Questions asked include, who is responsible for which tracking task? Are there logs involved? Where are they located? How often are they retrieved? Who are the responsible parties? What are the timelines and are they clearly defined? What is the communication chain when there are deviations from the procedure? The referral process should also distinguish between routine versus urgent referrals. Define time frames for each process. Is it accurate? Look at your checks and balances. Make sure all information about the patient's condition and care is transferred to referral providers and information is received back from the referral providers to ensure continuity of care. Don't forget to always make sure to be clear and detailed about timelines in these processes. Breakdowns in the process of referring patients to specialty consultants can cause a delay in appropriate medical follow-up. This creates risk for the patient, liability for the center, and just a bad situation for all. Taking steps to ensure patients attend referral appointments in a timely manner can help prevent cases of missed or delayed diagnosis, improve overall patient care, and ensure continuity of care. The purpose of a referral tracking procedure is to develop a standardized mechanism to safely, efficiently, and effectively communicate, document, and follow through with a patient care needs and decrease the opportunity for risk. Here we bring to your attention elements for a referral tracking procedure, which includes the following. Every referral goes into a tracking log, whether it's paper or electronic. Specify time ranges for each type of, of referral. For instance, is it urgent, routine, or by patient request? Designate who is accountable for referral follow-up. This can be defined by position or title. Address patient non-compliance in referrals. Document appropriately. Just a friendly reminder to make sure all applicable documents have the appropriate signatures and the governing board approval as needed. Elements of a tracking system should include referral origin, current monitoring status, and administrative and clinical details. Timely provider follow-up should include specific process and time frames for tra transmission and receipt of, receipt of results, as well as specific process and time frames for follow-up of unt untimely receipt of results. Staff knowledge of this procedure is vital. You should ensure all staff know the procedure and reference all information as is accessible. Ensure that all staff are fully implementing procedure through your audits. Documentation elements for referral tracking should include 
the use of medical records or the EHR, follow-up efforts, missed referral appointments, frequency of attempts, and attempt methods. For hospitalization tracking, you should include a tracking and monitoring system for receiving information <clears throat> regarding hospital or emergency department admissions. At a minimum, the tracking system must include patient information, date of admission or visit, date of notification, reason for visit, if known, documentation received, documentation requested, which includes the date it's requested. And you should also maintain documentation of follow-up initiated with hospital and or the patient to include the date initiated. These elements to all pertain to all admissions, not just those initiated by the provider. To be more specific, the elements of a sound hospital tracking system include establishment of a tracking and monitoring system for receiving hospital admission information, collecting specific patient information, which minimally includes date of visit or admission, date of notification, reason for visit, documentation received, and documentation requested. Identify who is responsible for receiving admission and discharge information. Implement a mechanism for follow-up with the patient, provider, or outside facility to request pertinent information. Your health center should identify staff members who are responsible for receiving ED and hospital information. Also needed is a monitor monitoring mechanism that is utilized for receiving hospital and ED admission information. This mechanism would guide the follow-up with the patient, provider, or outside facility to request pertinent medical information, such as diagnostic studies, discharge summaries, et cetera, related to a hospital or ED visit. These tracking mechanisms are extended to patients seen in the ED or urgent care center. Patients seen urgently can be off the radar for the provider. In these instances, there are additional considerations that need to be addressed. Ask your patients at the beginning of each visit whether they have been to a hospital or ED since their last, last health center visit. Document the patient's response in the medical record. Educate patients about providing the name of their primary care provider to the ED in an urgent care center. Centralize responsibility for monitoring and follow-up with outside facilities. This includes obtaining medical information such as diagnosis, diagnostic studies, follow-up care, and discharge instructions. Coordinate care recommendations and follow-up with patients. Document appropriately. Most patients will experience at least one diagnostic error in their lifetime, sometimes with devastating consequences. This further reinforces the need to adopt a culture of safety and the commitment to being proactive. Health centers can prevent missed, delayed, and incorrect diagnosis and their detrimental effects on patient safety by adhering to test tracking policies. Diagnostic tracking policies should contain the following elements. All test results, including normal results, are communicated to patients. We can all agree that some test results require more immediate response and are more time sensitive than others. Specify timeframes for each type of results i.e. critical, abnormal, or normal. All ordered tests should be tracked. Assign specific staff members 
to monitor the test tracking logs for accountability. Include fail-safe contingency plans. Consider the following what ifs. What if you can't reach the patient? What if the assigned provider is not available? Compliance must be addressed. For instance, did the patient receive the results and follow clinical recommendations? Everything is documented. Remember, not documented equals not done. Periodically, audit diagnostic test results to be sure that the providers have reviewed and initialed them. Data indicates that one out of three patient visits to a primary care physician will result in having laboratory tests ordered. Tracking errors can occur. Listed here are the basic components of a good diagnostic tracking procedure. Developing a simple and standardized tracking method reduces the risk of error because it minimizes staff members' reliance on memory and ensures that all members of the organization take the same steps to produce positive outcome. And don't forget to conduct those periodic audits. For your diagnostic procedures, and here we're thinking of labs and x-rays, important elements to obtain and monitor include the patient information, the date the test was ordered, the ordering provider, the list of tests ordered, date test results are received, the provider who reviewed the results, follow-up rec follow recommended by the provider, and the communication of results to the patient. Failure to effectively track and follow up critical laboratory and diagnostic test results can prevent the timely diagnosis and appropriate management of clinical problems in the ambulatory setting. Critical results always require urgent action and immediate follow up. Health centers must have systems in place to ensure that these results are promptly flagged and communicated to the responsible provider and that the patient is immediately notified for follow-up. All notifications need to be within specified timeframes. In instances where the provider cannot be reached in a timely manner, provider notification needs to include a backup plan. Every stage of communication, response, and follow-up should be documented. Clear policies and procedures that support effective communication and handoffs are essential. Health centers should regularly monitor test tracking and follow-up processes. Good practice dictates a random tracing of the tracking process starting with the test initiation, for instance, when the test is ordered, to the final element of receipt of results and the subsequent follow-up. This process can be summarized and included in your QI, QA audits. For normal results, the elements reviewed should include communication to the provider, Verification that results are within therapeutic range. Communication to patient through established processes for routine results. Patient contact efforts to include the date, time, method, and the person contacted. Documentation of successful and unsuccessful patient contact attempts and other clinical information as appropriate. Though normal results do not cause harm, they are still important to follow and document the elements. For abnormal results, these may cause need for alarm. And so the elements reviewed and included within your procedures should include communication to the provider, time frame of communication to the patient, patient contact efforts to include the date, time, method, and person contacted, 
documentation of successful and unsuccessful attempts and other clinical information as appropriate. Your health center should differentiate between normal, abnormal, and critical results as your patient's safety rely on how you communicate and respond to this information. For critical values, the following elements should be present. Time frame to communicate to the patient, acceptable means to communicate to the patient, procedures to contact the backup provider, measures to contact the patient, documentation of patient contact attempts, other critical clinical information as appropriate, the tracking and monitoring of critical values, and audit reports to QIQA. For all tracking, including diagnostics, the documentation of your actions is key. We know that most staff are truly dedicated to patient care and take the time and effort to reach out to patients in need. But unless these efforts are documented, it is impossible to confirm that they truly occurred. We have covered a lot of information to support the documentation of your operations and recommended tools. You don't have to start from scratch or go it alone in development and refining of your risk management program. Health centers have free access to the Clinical Risk Management Program website provided by ECRI Institute on behalf of HRSA. Access includes hundreds of guidance articles, toolkits, sample policies, self-assessment tools, archived webinars, courses for continuing education credit and certificates, bi-weekly risk and safety e-news, and much more. Key features of the risk management website include risk management courses for the health center and free clinic staff with continuing medical education credits at no cost to health center providers. Online high-risk obstetrics and fetal monitoring and instructional courses are available for CME or CNE credit. Toolkits include topics such as credentialing and privileging, quality improvement, test tracking, event reporting, and a sample risk management plan with step-by-step -step guides to implement these key programs. Sample policies and tools, uh, tool libraries for templates include examples for registered staff can receive automatic uh, mailings from ECRI that includes notification of new and upcoming releases. One such publication, the Risk and Safety E-News is sent via email every other week for interested health center staff. Assessment checklists sent by email every month on topics such as behavioral health and assessing clinical competence is also available. Our goal is to provide as many tools as possible to assist your programs and application development you are encouraged to reference and use tools such as these found in the Risk Management Toolkit in the completion of your application. For additional assistance with your cred credentialing and privileging processes, please reference and follow these added tools. Here is a sample toolkit from the website that shows you the layout and user-friendly documents you can access on the ECRI site. Note the comprehensive list of documents available in this tracking toolkit, including a sample policy for reporting test results, sample patient letters, and tracking procedures. ECRI Institute has a four-level Ambulatory Care Risk Management Certificate Program. This self-paced online training consists of courses offered for free to Section 330 funded health centers, free clinics, FQHC lookalikes on behalf of HRSA. 
Learners will receive a risk management certificate for each level successfully completed. There are three ways to receive assistance. The first resource is the policy and FTCA resources found on the FTCA website. Next, as you think of some wonderful questions, please direct them to our health center program support, which can be reached by telephone or electronically by the web form. Please use the resources provided to assist you in completing your deeming application. Thank you for attending this webinar.